welcome to the future of the martial arts business as revealed in the ideal student. This is going to be a groundbreaking webinar. Please pay close attention if you're concerned about your future in this business because it's about to change. So let's start with the ideal student because this is where it all starts. This is, what characteristics make up the ideal student? First, they strongly desire the results they are seeking. They're easy to teach and to work with. Typically, they're the sole decision maker about training and continuing the train. They become addicted to the results. Gotta love that. They invite friends to join them in class. There's seldom a problem with payments with the ideal student, and they're the first to volunteer to help out. And they're under pressure to get the results that they desire. That's very important. Notice I said the results they are seeking rather than the results you offer. I believe most martial arts schools do not offer the results they are seeking, but they certainly could. They're getting those results elsewhere, and my mission today is to show you how you can provide those results for them, and I'm going to help you every step of the way. Let's get going. In just a few minutes, I'll show you where they're getting results that they've become addicted to. Then I'll show you how you can pull them into your school by the hundreds. First, let's find out who the ideal student is. Is it men? Men are not likely to invite friends to join them in class because they're more solitary than social. They often have an ego regarding their performance. And they're most apt of all the markets to have preconceived ideas about training and fighting. And they're most apt to haggle on price and try and negotiate. They can be great students, sure, but they're less likely to be ideal. So how about families? A lot of instructors love to say that families are the ideal student. I don't think so at all. Why? There are too many moving parts in a family, too many varying needs to fulfill. One bad experience can cost you the entire family. Rank and age scheduling becomes an issue as they advance in rank because you know as you advance in rank, Typically, you have fewer classes to choose from. Discounting can be counterproductive to the school's growth. And families certainly can be a great asset to your school, but again, they're not the ideal student or students. Teens, good luck. No go if they have to wear a gi or any kind of crazy looking outfit. No go if they have to speak funny words or participate in lame rituals. They have tons of competing activities. They can lose interest in a um, I'm sorry, I, I was texting. They lose interest in a second. They prefer to do things with their friends and peers, and unless their friends and peers are in the school with them, that's a tough sell. Always has been. Now, mind you, teens can be a source of great talent for your school, but again, not ideal. Let's go to the kids. It's a kid's market right now, and... <laughs> They are far from ideal students. They have tons of competing activities. Way too many decision makers involved in the process. Parents can pull the kid from class as punishment. One parent, the other parent, the grandparent. They too can lose interest at any time. And they're totally dependent on the parents to get them to class. So if there's a schedule change for the parent, well that could kill the kid's attendance. They're totally dependent on the parents to pay for classes as well. Of course, kids are our greatest success stories, but again, not ideal. How about women? Women have no preconceived ideas about training or fighting. They have no ego about performance. They're highly social. They bond quickly. They strongly desire the results they are seeking. They're easy to teach and to work with. Typically, the sole decision maker, and they become addicted to the results. They invite their friends to join them. There's seldom a problem with payments. The women are the first to volunteer to help out, and in our society, there's no doubt, they are under the most pressure to stay in good shape, to look good. That's just the way it is. So the ideal student is the professional woman. So how do you get them into your school? First, <laughs> you can't dress them up like this anymore. Offer me a program that doesn't, I mean, you're, you put a woman in this ugly looking outfit, Put her in front of a mirror with a bunch of other people, and all she sees is herself in this dumpy outfit. That's crazy. You know what a, how huge a barrier that is? It's 
Insanity. To get these women in your school, particularly the professional women, you have to have a super clean facility, not the uh, dungeon dojo stink bomb that my school was. Uh, and it has to be a friendly and informal atmosphere. Get off your, cran your grand poobah stumps. That is a barrier. You want a friendly and informal atmosphere. If you're a good instructor, you will get respect. If you're not a good instructor, you will not get respect, regardless of what you force people to call you. Create social events year-round. Women love social events. The beauty of that is that it helps them to bond. And when they bond, they stay. My brother Jim, who does the UBC, which is a... It's not like what I'm going to describe to you. It's a contest. But all the people in the contest, for instance, they'll go to the park and they'll have a three-mile walk. And it's not a run because that would be competitive. It's just a walk and talk. And they walk and they talk. It's a beautiful day. And they end up back at the picnic table where they whip out all their healthy picnic snacks and foods. And they have a great time in the afternoon. So create these kind of social events and you'll keep these students bonding to your school. There's no grappling or physical contact. No surprises. This is what I call the 100% rule. Every class has to have 100% enthusiasm by the students for what's being taught. For instance, you're in the midst of a kickboxing class and you decide you're going to work on mount defenses. Wow. 80% of the students in that class, particularly if they're women, are going to be instantly uncomfortable, unprepared, and 20% might get into it. Instead, create special classes for grappling where the people that want to do that can enroll so that way you know that 100% of the people in this class want to do grappling. I can tell you right now when you're teaching your forms, 90% of the students in your class would rather be doing something else. 10% want to do the forms. That's why we suggest peeling your traditional program out, make it an expensive upsell because it is hard to teach. And that way the students that really want to learn that stuff to earn those belts have access to it. So when you're teaching that class, you know 100% of the students in there really want this. It makes it a more fun class to teach for everybody. And oh, by the way, for these ideal students, you really have to kill them. You've got to work them hard for an hour. They're not there to have long explanations about technique. They're not there to learn forms. They're there to get killed. Figure it out. Hey everybody, it's uh, Shelly from Mom Getting Fit, and uh, this is actually my first video, <laughs> but I just finished a uh, boxing class at uh, Title Boxing Club. Actually, it finished 11 minutes ago, and I am still trying to catch my breath. That was the hardest workout I've ever done in my life. It kicked my ass, and I haven't checked my heart rate monitor, so I keep looking at it to see how many calories I burned, <sighs> but I know I burned a lot, and so... Just wanted to check in and tell you that I loved it, but it kicked my friggin' butt. All right, uh, 598 calories is what I burned in one hour. And I can tell you that I was probably doing 50% of the workout. I had to stop many times, um, catch my breath, had to go to the bathroom a couple times. Um, there was even a couple times where I thought I was gonna vomit. Uh, my endurance is absolutely horrible, so I'm sure it probably wouldn't be as bad for people that have good endurance. But um, not only is it a boxing uh, class, but they work on your core, so my abs hurt, and you do a lot of running and squats and leg work and a lot of stuff, but it was really fun. Um, during the workout, it seemed like forever, but it actually went by really fast, um, so I will definitely be going back. Hopefully, um, I'd like to do the class at least three times a week.